Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here and let's take a look at materials and textures. So within Unity, the way you can actually make an object look like something is by applying a material to it and then applying a texture to that material. It's worth pointing out that a texture does not get applied directly to an actual object. It has to go through that phase of going to a material and then going to the object. But that's not to say that you can't drag and drop a texture onto an object because you can and that is the first way of creating a material so if we take this texture and bring it onto this object you would basically have that texture on this object however if we were to click on that object you would see down here in the inspector panel the material and that material is created in this folder right here so when we apply a texture to an object it automatically creates its own material within this folder right here or any subfolders that you may have textures further down. So how do we use this material? Well, let's take a look at what we can and can't do. We can either play around with it here in the inspector panel or we can click the material itself and play around with it directly here. So the albedo right here, this is the main part. This is what dictates whatever texture is attached to the material which then feeds onto a game object. We can also change the kind of tint of the game object as well. As we can see here, by default white means it's original color, but we can tint it, let's say, a greenish kind of color by just doing that. It's as simple as that. So the next thing that you would want to take a look at is the metallic. If we move the slider, we can see just how much that changes. And depending on your game world, you would want it to be really metallic or not very metallic at all. And the same applies for the smoothness. These two you can play around with quite a bit to get a different effect. The next one down is changing the source. So you can either change the albedo alpha or metallic alpha. You see, you won't be able to see much of a difference, at least with a simple object, but you would see it more within more quality objects, we could say. But in simple development, that's not going to matter too much. I generally like to have it as albedo alpha. I feel like that gives me a little more control. Normal map is something we'll also deal with quite a bit because normal map allows you to have some bumps or it looks like bumps within the object. So it gives it a bit more of a 3D look rather than the flat look that it has right now. So to create a normal map, you would take your original texture, thank you malware bytes, and you would hold control and press D to duplicate it. So create a new one and up here in the texture type, you can change that to a normal map. And you can either click create from grayscale or not. We'll use both right now just to show you how it looks. So let's click on apply. And we've then created right here a normal map, as simple as that. So if we click on this object now, and let's edit this in the inspector panel on the actual object, we can drag and drop this normal map right here. And you should notice a change. See how it looks now? It looks completely different, but we can also change the intensity of that normal map right here just by moving across, easy. So you can manually set this number or you can hover your mouse here to change. Let's set it back to one. Let's click on the normal map again and then let's click on create from grayscale. And this will change in real time when we press apply. So you can see it gives you a different kind of look and this look definitely gives you more of a feeling of there's actually a bit more depth to this object rather than it just being flat and that is evident just by looking at it right now, but you can still apply that change there in the normal map. Looks a little bit crazy, probably not the best thing to do, but maybe one isn't quite right and you might want to reduce it slightly so you could have 0.5 just to give it a little bit of texture, but you can see how this is applied nicely. Now all the others won't really matter too much within this because it's not massively important to understand what a lot of the things do here. Things like height map. Height map is a way, essentially another way of making it look three dimensional rather than the 2D flat kind of thing. And things like tiling, you can dictate how many times you want it to repeat on each face of the object. And generally you can play around with a lot of these settings and you know, see what you can come up with. Things like shader as well. You can change the shader, for example, to particles and go additive and you will see what kind of effect it has. Shaders are something which are, again, vital in materials, and you can get a lot of custom shaders. But generally, for at least 
simple game development, there is a lot of things that you can play around with to make them look kind of cool. And you can see how this looks now. We've made it look a little bit like a box. Nice and simple. But again, it, it's all about how you want to create your own game and how you want to deal with your own objects. I would recommend playing around with the materials as much as possible. But there is another way to create a material. We don't necessarily have to drag and drop every time. We can right click, create, and guess what? We have it right there, material. And it's created the exact same way. So instead of the albedo being already there, we would just need to drag and drop the albedo straight onto there. And yeah, you can just drag the material onto a game object, like so. So that is how materials work. That's the flow that you use to go from a texture to a material to a game object. And that is basically how it's done. Remember, textures aren't applied directly to uh, the object. It's always the material that covers the object. So guys, I hope that helps a little bit when it comes to texturing and materials. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon as well. And you can stay up to date with all the content that I have on this channel because there's loads to learn, guys. Thank you very much for watching.